which is the best 360 camera for photography and virtual tours. In this video, I'm going to compare four of the top cameras in 2020 side by side to see which one shoots the best 360 photos in tricky lighting situations. The contenders are the Insta360 ONE X, Candel KuCam 8K, the Theta Z1, and X-Phase Pro S. The One R wasn't fully ready when we made this video. However, I do have a sample in a very similar situation from the One R that I'm going to show you, as well as my thoughts about how it does for virtual tours. And even better, I have a special guest to help me. Welcome, Mick from 360 Rumors. Hey guys, these are the best cameras for 360 photos. So yeah, I wonder which one's gonna win. We're in LA right now and I've hired a studio in downtown LA. It looks a little bit dodgy, but it's got the perfect lighting conditions for what we need, which is high contrast. We have bright light shining through the windows and the other side of the room is quite dark with strong shadows and to be able to expose these properly in the same image is going to be a challenge. So we're going to try a few different shooting techniques with each camera to see which one does the best job. We're going to be using the firmware, software and apps from early 2020. They are definitely going to get better as time passes, but this is what we have now and we're going to do our best to get some awesome looking photos. All right, Ben, which cameras do you want to use? I'm going to be using the Insta360 ONE X and the Theta Z1. Nice. Which one do you think is going to win? Well, my gut says it's going to be the Theta Z1 because I've shot a lot of amazing 360 content on this. However, I think the Kandal Ku Cam could really give it a run for its money because I've seen some incredible photos taken with it. Yeah, I think the X phase might have a chance too. Like with the detail? It could, it's super high resolution, but is it gonna have the dynamic range? We shall see. All right, the first contender is the One X, and what I've done is taken the diffuser off of my softbox here to create an extreme hotspot. And this is essentially simulating lights on the ceiling or a really bright lamp. If you were shooting a virtual tour, you got to deal with extreme hotspots like this one. So my first test with the One X is going to be inbuilt HDR with two stops, then four stops, then I'm going to choose raw and see if I can get a better result that way. Okay, so this is the bit where you have to get out of my shot, please. Okay. Out with uh -oh. you. <laughs> All right, so this is the X phase, one of my favorite 360 cameras. It's really unusual because it's got like 35 lenses and none of them are fish eyes. And another issue for the X phase is with so many lenses, what about the stitching? Will it be good enough for virtual tours, especially in a tight spot like this? So from the app lets you choose either a three shot HDR or six shot HDR. What's cool with the X phase is that the HDR has no ghosting. Like literally, you can take a handheld shot and it will still have no ghosting. Now, the only thing is with six shot HDR, it, there's a chance of failing, but with three shot, it's, it's totally cool. Now, one challenge with X phase is that you don't get to preview your shot. Like here's the app, there's no preview. It doesn't show you like what the shot's gonna look like. So you kind of have to trust the exposure algorithm. And here's the thing, it's exposure algorithm is a little bit aggressive. Given the sh conditions here, uh, I'm gonna go with minus two EV, particularly because of that. So here's the three shot. And there's, a, we don't, there's a self timer option, but we don't need to do that. So we're gonna press okay, and then we're gonna press the shutter. It actually stitches the photos and fuses them in HDR on your smartphone in 135 megapixels, full resolution. Now it's in JPEG, but if you use your desktop, you can actually export it in Adobe DNG RAW. Now it's not exactly a real Adobe DNG RAW, but you know, it, it, you can use it for the DNG 8 workflow if you're so inclined. Camera number three, the Theta Z1. I have no question at all, it's going to do an excellent job, but how good of a job will it do compared to the others? All right, here we are. Here's the preview. You can see around the space, it already looks good. And I'm gonna start with HDR rendering. I found the Theta cameras to have the best inbuilt HDR of all 360 cameras. So I know it's gonna do a good job. Let's have a quick look and see what we've got. Oh, look at that, that's beautiful. Look at that, that's such a strong light source and it's really muted it very nicely. Let's look outside, I can see everything. Oh, I love this camera. It's so good at dynamic range. And to think that this is a JPEG, that's just incredible. Now I'm going to try something a little bit fancy. 
I found the best method of exposing a high contrast environment is using bracketing, which essentially means you're capturing multiple exposures that each cover a specific part of your image. So when you've got a really bright highlight, you're exposing just for the highlights. When you have dark shadows, you expose just for the shadows. Then you combine all the images together later into one perfect image. So I'm going to set to five stops, each about one or two EV away. I'm going to say two. So I'll do one four under, one two under, one on zero, one two above and one four above. Then later on, I'll combine them together into one perfect image. <laughs> this is the Kandao KuCam AK and it can shoot not just in JPEG but also in Adobe DNG RAW and not only that but it has a unique mode called the DNG 8 burst mode so what that does is it takes a series of eight raw DNG photos uh, like all in quick succession and then you use the Kandao RAW Plus free image stacking software now of course Image stacking is nothing new, right? But here's the cool thing. With Kandao Raw Plus, there will be no ghosting. No ghosting whatsoever, even if you shoot it handheld. Wow, yeah. I've seen some incredible DNG 8 Raw shots from the KuCam 8K, so yeah. I think it's a really cool thing that they've added because what it does is it takes those photos in quick succession so it can basically eliminate all the flaws, things like noise and other imperfections from the colors, from the shadows, from the highlights and get a really balanced image. It, it almost makes it like, like as, if it were shoot, as if you were shooting with a larger sensor. So um, you'll have like better shadow recovery. Anyway, we'll test it out. Now in the future, there's gonna be an additional mode called Express DNG8 which means that you don't even need to use the kind of RAW Plus software. It's going to stack the raw DNG photos in the camera. So one of the cool things about the KuCam AK is that it has this touchscreen. It's a 360 touchscreen and uh, gives you a preview of not just the composition, but also the exposure. So we're going to shoot with, you know what, let's shoot with DNG8. Because with, when you shoot in DNG8, you're going to have access to all the individual shots anyway. So you can choose whether to um, use a DNG 8 workflow or just use a simpler one-shot DNG. Here I'm choosing a shutter speed that will uh, just expose enough of the highlights. Here it's just a matter of choice, uh, like how aggressively do you want to recover the highlights? Because um, if you have to do a lot of shadow recovery in post, then there's going to be more noise. So it's kind of like a balance. I've just like moved it to a shutter speed that I think, you know, it preserves enough of the highlights. Five, four, three, two, one. Are you going to try any other exposure methods or are you confident enough in DNG8? Um, you know what? Here, here's another, another tip to get even better quality with the, with the Kandao KuCam 8K, do it twice because the raw plus software four, three, <laughs> two, one. The raw plus software can stack up to 16 Adobe DNG raw images. All right, we are done shooting. It's time to edit. One eternity later. Okay, we've taken our sample photos, we've edited them, stitched them, and now let's take a look at the results we got. Opening up my first Insta360 ONE X photo, and this was taken with two stops inbuilt HDR. I've got to say, I'm surprised at this image. This looks halfway decent. I was yeah, expecting a much I, worse image. Yeah, I, you know, for me, I don't really see the One X as a photo camera. I see mostly I as a video camera, but this looks great. The colors are fantastic. The only thing I would say is that that building in the background is totally blown out. So what I did next was shot a HDR with four stop intervals, and it's already looking better outside. We can see more detail, but it's not perfect. It is a bit hazy and washed out. I mean, mm -hmm. Look, this is a good image. I don't mind this at all. And when I look to the other side of the room, it's looking okay. The colors are a bit blotchy. Whenever you zoom in, I've found with 1X images, you really start seeing those imperfections pretty quickly, especially softness. 
not really seeing anything sharp at all in this room. And that's yeah. fair enough because it's not the highest megapixel camera in the world, but it is noticeable, especially if you're shooting for virtual tours. I just don't feel comfortable charging money for photos where there's noticeable softness there because people like to zoom in. They're not gonna zoom in a thousand percent, they but they want to 200%. And you can notice that with any kind of 1X photos that there is gonna be a noticeable softness there. I also noticed that here the colors are not totally consistent. For example, this is slightly reddish. Here, slightly greenish instead of like being all white, right? Yeah, a so bit of inconsistent really... colors. Look, I gotta say the softbox actually looks quite good in terms of the exposure. Overall, the exposure is very decent, but it's lacking a bit of contrast. It's a bit washed out and the colors are a bit blotchy. I think for entry level virtual tours, I think this is passable. Yeah, very entry level. Beginner. Uh, virtual tours for small businesses, yes, but look at those highlights, it's completely white. I still think we're gonna get better from the other three cameras. First though, I'm just gonna show you what I got with my raw shot with the One X, and look at this, this is worse. This is single shot raw, and yeah. I just wouldn't use this. So I think overall we'll give the One X a pass, but I think we'll probably find some better results with the other cameras. I found the One R to be almost identical to the One X in terms of image quality being its second priority. The One R and One X shoot great videos no question but in terms of 360 photo quality it's compromised in a lot of ways again we've got the detail issue and basically this shot even though it's in a different circumstance looks basically identical to the one x in terms of color contrast and clarity where i'd say the one r has a slight edge over the one x is it shoots nine stop hdr and it's also got night view mode which doesn't strictly have to be used at night time but you can also use it during the day to minimize noise in your shots so so yes, I would say the One R is like 10 to 20% better for photos than the One X. However, it still has the same flaws of the One X that we just talked about. All right, so here we have the X phase and what happened here? <laughs> well, uh, to put it quite frankly, um, the results were not quite as expected. I've had, you know, very high regard for the X phase, but with the extreme lighting conditions here, I had a lot of problems. Several issues here, first of all, Let's talk about the good parts. The good parts, the stitching is kind of okay. I see just a few stitching errors in the on the floor with the cable. Like there's like a slight, you know, bend there here and there, but it's generally smooth. Another thing that's good here, well, outside the exposure is great. That you actually could, looks fantastic. Yeah, the window, out, you, you could see so much detail. You could see even the air conditioner. I want to see like see that yeah. on the Z1. I'm pretty sure you couldn't see that with any of these other cameras. Yeah, because the X phase resolution is up to 135 megapixels. Now that's the good part. Okay, and now for the bad part. <laughs> now the bad part. Well, there's several issues here. First of all, the colors in the shadow areas that I had to push to recover, like I pushed it uh, around 4 EV. And you see that the, the accuracy of the colors is, it's gone. Color noise all over, it's just not really usable. And beyond that, there's like a severe problem with flare. Yeah, especially in this area here, it's come up with these blue and green tones. Yeah, see, that, that, that's the part that makes me wonder. I've, I haven't seen that before, and I'm, I think it might be flare. Because one of the issues with the X phase is flare resistance is, is somewhat weak. And so when we look at this softbox, for example, then you see these magenta flare artifacts and they're even on the floor. Yeah, and this doesn't mean that all photos you take with this camera will produce this. It's because firstly, we deliberately underexposed the image because those highlights were really bright and they would have been completely blown out if we hadn't have done that. And then trying to recover the yeah. shadows, they didn't quite recover as nicely as possible. So there's a good chance that in doing that, it's brought up these colors, maybe just a little bit. Yeah, but be, and then the other thing is uh, because the softbox was like shining on some of the lenses, not others. It's just absolute kind of like worst case scenario for the X phase. Now in better conditions, let's say if the softbox were turned away, I would expect this to turn out much, much better. Yeah, and I'd also add that it's still early in the X phase's life and they are going to improve it significantly, including the workflow, the stitching, the colors, the dynamic range. It's probably gonna take time though. Yeah, I guess if you love the detail, which is not available on other 360 cameras, this is like the detail here is unsurpassed. If you really love that, I would highly recommend taking 
many different exposures as possible. Hopefully, at least one or two of them will turn out okay and you can work with it. Yeah, so I have seen some really impressive results with the X phase, better than what we've got here. Mm -hmm. Firstly, most of them have been outside, but also they've probably gone through quite a bit more editing and post-production work. This was only a really quick edit that we've done here. And if we were to reshoot this again, the only reason we didn't is because the lighting conditions have changed quite a bit. So with a bit more editing, I'm sure we could salvage this image a bit more, but for now, it does require a bit of work, especially in high contrast interiors. The exteriors are fine, you won't have any yeah. issues, but unfortunately virtual tours and a lot of 360 photography is done inside. And uh, you have to be forewarned that with flare, it is extremely difficult to correct in post. So at this point, I wouldn't have confidence using the X Phase Pro S professionally, but I know I will in a few months time, once they've ironed out all the bugs in the workflow and everything is working nicely, I would definitely consider using this. But for now, it's too experimental. It's too in the, the alpha or beta stages and mm -hmm. it's just not really ready to use it as a camera you charge for. I guess it's great for us a hobbyist. It's a good choice because of the detail. But when, when the situation is such that you cannot afford to make mistakes, the X phase would not be my first choice. No. Or my second. But yeah, watch this space because yeah, it <laughs> is gonna third. get better. Or third <laughs> or fourth. <laughs> Um, yeah, it is going to get better, but for now, I would say just wait a bit on the X phase. Now, if you want to see the X phase shots in other lighting conditions, but that are arguably more representative of typical conditions, go check out the link in the description below. All right, next camera is the Theta Z1. And here is my inbuilt HDR image I shot with the Z1. This is, this is fused entirely in the camera. All in the camera? I haven't done a single piece of color correction on this image. Take a look at those highlights. I can see every window of that building. No blown highlights at all. No, well, I mean, other than the softbox uh, yeah, a little the bit. Regular highlights. Yeah, the that's a really strong light, but it's still done a good job for an inbuilt JPEG image uh, to yeah. produce that. That's right. really good. Amazing. Exposure looks good. When I zoom in, it's sharp-ish, it's not noticeably soft, and it's not noticeably sharp either. It's kind of in the middle ground, but it's good enough. Something I've noticed with the, the Theta Z1 is you, it does have chromatic aberration, but not where you think. You would assume chromatic aberration would come in the window areas, but what I found with the Z1 is I see it in other places of the image, like on this light here. Here we're seeing chromatic aberration, but also on other objects, even maybe a little bit on these light stands. Let's take a look around. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing a bit of it. And on this soft box here, mm -hmm. and I've just found it spill into other areas, not necessarily the windows. It does spill around a bit. Look, this can be fixed very easily. Awesome. And you do have to zoom in like I just did to find it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is a noticeable imperfection to keep in mind with the Z1. Little bit of chromatic aberration, but otherwise for an inbuilt HDR shot, this no. is incredible. Yeah, considering that, did you have to edit this or this is no, no editing? No, this is straight out of the Z camera. Th that's amazing. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, if you don't plan to do any editing, you can't get better than that. Yeah, this is much better than the Insta360 ONE X inbuilt HDR with both two and four stops. It blows it away and it's sharper. The colors are better. It's just a better image in every way. But it doesn't stop there because we have another image from the Theta Z1, and this is my bracketed raw shot. So as you can see here, I shot five images, all JPEG and DNG. I combined the five DNGs, and this is what I got. So we have a very similar image to before, so we can still see our highlights outside, mm -hmm. but let's have a look at the softbox now. We can actually see a clear circle there that we couldn't before. So it's even better with this dynamic range and you'll find there's noticeably less noise in the darker areas. Look, there is a little bit of noise. I could have yeah, reduced so. the noise like quite a bit, but I've, I did use a bit, but not that much. Mm -hmm. And look, this is acceptable for a dark area of the image. It's not that noisy. And which software did you use to fuse the exposure? Yeah, so I combined the five exposures in Adobe Photoshop. So yeah, it's very easy to do that. And I've got a tutorial on my channel. It's called something like how to take better interior 360 shots. I've got to say, I'm really impressed with this image. Look, it's not as sharp as a DSLR and it's not or as sharp. X -phase. It's not as sharp as the X phase. I can't see, well, there's that air conditioner, but, but I can't, yeah, yeah, you can't really see it. It's just like a little yeah. block. Yeah, notwithstanding the lack of detail, this is the, so out of the three we've seen so far, 
this is by far yes far by far the, the winner especially for dynamic range and yeah. i find in a lot of situations good dynamic range is more important than flat out resolution and look i could have bumped it up even more to like 10 shots if i wanted to really go that extra mile if i wanted to get more detail from here and maybe bring up those shadows a little bit more mm -hmm. i could have done that but it's just overkill like this is good enough of an image already mm -hmm. but overall i'm extremely impressed with the theta z1 and at this point i'm gonna say it's between the theta z1 and the kukam 8k yeah. next is the kandal kukam 8k wow what do you think ben wow so, that's really good this is a Ooh. shot this is a 16 dng shot so as i explained earlier there's a dng 8 mode but you can do two dng 8s and stack them all in the Candal Raw Plus and there will be zero ghosting. The benefit of that, you get so much better color depth, better dynamic range, especially in the shadows. And so what do you think? Ben? Yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm noticing how nice the contrast is here in a really light area of the image. It still maintained that really good contrast, really that rich, depth. Right? Yeah. Yes, I'm seeing so many different shades of color, of light and dark. It's not yeah. just either light or dark. It's like That's light, a little bit lighter, exactly. a little bit lighter. That's the effect so of bit depth right there. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I'm it's not it, just the uh, luminosity, but it's also the the uh, saturation and the hue. Yeah, I'm seeing it all around the image, and this is by far the cleanest the softbox has looked in any of these cameras so far. That's a yeah. clean circle. Yeah. We haven't seen that with the other three cameras yet. This is extremely impressive. I'm finding very few flaws with this image. I'm seeing a little well, bit of noise. Well, there's quite a bit of noise. Yeah. There's, yeah. So um, see, the thing is with the DNG 16 mode, you're not shooting at different exposures. You're only using one exposure. Now it is technically possible to take two different sets at two different exposures, like manually bracketed in other words, and then combine them later on the way you did with the Theta Z1 but it's not doesn't have like a built-in feature for that still though i think that this has a lot of potential with the kukam 8k with this dng8 you could take three of those which would be um eight nine ten eleven are you sure <laughs> i'll have, have to get out a calculator 20 Math. 20 <laughs> 24 images combined together at three different exposures to me that seems like the recipe for a perfect image yes if you have the uh the time uh, to do it and you have the, the client who's willing to play, pay for that time then yes this looks like it has like one of the highest potentials yeah and i'm yeah. sure you could do that with the theta z1 too it just might require a bit more work because they don't yet have dng8 as an inbuilt feature all right when you look at the softbox there's a little bit of flare there that's partly because of my mistake in wiping the lens uh, not very carefully i mean other than that there's also a little bit of flare artifacts there you just have to make a judgment on like mm. you know whether oh, that's you're possible right. or not i didn't yeah. notice that yeah I mean, it's not not as good as the flare resistance of the theta z1 yeah i mean in all fairness it's unlikely you're going to have soft boxes like these in in like your without a diffuser yeah, without a diffuser on your virtual tour shoot but you might have another extreme light source so it's good to know these things if you come across it yeah i mean it is noticeable now that you've pointed it out i probably wouldn't have noticed it actually if you hadn't have pointed it out mm -hmm. but now that i see it i can't not see it <laughs> so um, <laughs> so yeah but otherwise i'm so impressed with this image the only other thing i would add is i noticed this area is a little bit darker yes. part of it was because we shot this as the very final shot of these cameras and it was a tiny little bit darker naturally but maybe it could also could have just used a little bit more color correction to bring up the shadows mm -hmm. in the back of the room i've got to say i'm extremely impressed with this yeah, image so am I. Yeah. and i would say this probably looks better than the theta z1 i mean i love the theta z1 how i would differentiate them a bit more is that the theta z1 is an already established camera at this point it's been out for long enough that they've fixed the problems with it and you can use it straight away you're not having to beta test their apps and their software <laughs> and you're not getting some of these issues which are conducive of cameras when they first come out whereas the theta z1 it's been there it's done that it's good to go right now so with the KUKAM 8K, it might be a bit of a waiting game before you consistently can get shots like this and better. So overall, if we had to pick a winner, what would yours be? Uh, my top choice right now, if I had to shoot a virtual tour, would be Theta Z1. Okay. My top choice right now, if I were to shoot a virtual tour, would be the Theta Z1. If I were to shoot a virtual tour in two, three, four, five, six months' time, it's going to be the KUKAM 8K. 
Yes, I think it's very likely that they'll be able to perfect the software, especially the flare resistance using software correction. Yeah, they're both incredible cameras. So really it's up to you. Like no matter which one you choose of these four, you're probably gonna get a good result other than the X phase, which may or may not work, uh, but they're all good. So it's just a matter of your budget and what workflow you like best, as well as your platforms, because some of these cameras are more friendly for Mac, some are more friendly for PC. So the most ready one is the Theta Z1 that will give you a professional result for 360 photography, but it's also the most expensive. So that's another yeah. factor to weigh up. Yeah. The KuCam 8K is cheaper, so you yeah, may want to almost wait. Almost half the price. Yeah, so you may want to wait a month or two, or you can buy it now. I'll put a link in the description as well as to all the cameras you see in this video. All right, guys, there's our comparison. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm curious to know which one of these four was your winner and why. Let me know down in the comments. If you've ever thought about shooting virtual tours professionally, but don't know where to get started with one or all of these cameras, then I put together a video course called Virtual Tour Pro that will show you the entire process from beginning to end. Nothing is left out. You can start as a complete beginner and it will upskill you to the point that you can shoot professionally and start earning money with your work. I'll put a link to Virtual Tour Pro down there. Something else I think you guys will find super useful is a tool that Michael put together and that's called the 360 Camera Comparison Tool. The comparison that we made, you can do it yourself so that you can judge for yourself which camera is better. So all you need to do is go to 360cameracomparison.com. Now with this tool, you'll be able to compare two cameras side by side. We're gonna upload these shots there and you'll be able to zoom in, take a look at them. You can see the level of detail, the noise, everything that you might not notice from a quick video. By the way, it costs nothing. Yay. Also, a quick heads up, I do have a new 360 camera sitting on my table right now, and it's the Lab Pano Pilot 1, which was made specifically with virtual tours in mind. The firmware isn't totally ready yet, but I will get a dedicated review out as soon as it is. Now, Mick, where can they find you? You can check me out at youtube.com slash 360rumors. Yes, and also 360rumors.com. I'll put a link to his channel and his website down there. You know where you can find me, right here in front of your very eyes. So you probably already know that. That's it from us. Hope you're all doing excellent. If you have any questions, leave them down there. And we'll see you in 360. Whoosh.